In this video, I'm going to quickly show you how to get started with the IAP project on OSX Catalina. However, you can use this video to get started on any version of OSX that we support. However, Catalina, um, shall we say, has some teething issues with our project. So first of all, if you haven't done so already, you'll need to download a copy of Xcode. You can get this from the App Store, and we're using version 12.01. Once you've downloaded this, which could take quite a long time, you need to open up your web browser and point it at this link here. Once you're on the website, click on this button here where it says code and hit download zip. Depending on whether you have dial-up or broadband, this could be either very quick or very slow. Once you've downloaded the project, you need to go into the folder and open up IEP Proj and builds, Mac OS X, and then inside here you have the IEP Proj.xcode project. Double click on this. Now this is where you have start to have issues if you're on Catalina. Um, so Catalina has a lot of additional security settings in it that kind of cause havoc when you're downloading stuff from the internet, especially when it comes to developing applications. Um, so for this reason, you're going to have to hit trust and open and just trust us that, the, that our project is not going to, you know, um, send all your information back to us or do anything malicious. I promise you that it won't. Uh, once you're inside here, you want to click on the IAP.cpp file. For some reason, if you open the project and it's kind of it's blank, there's nothing here, you'll need to click on the little arrow and follow the arrows down from IAP proj, IAP proj, source, and then you have IAP.h and IAP.cpp. Okay, so once you're here, click on the IAP.cpp file, and this is where we're going to write all of our code. So at this point, our project is set up, and to test that it's actually going to do something, we'll just print a simple uh, text message to ourselves. So we're going to write STD followed by two colons, C out, followed by two less than symbols, some quotation marks. I'm going to write, hello, Sam, uh, the project is working. Is working, I hope, um, followed by a backslash N. Again, what, what this line means and what all of these lines of code mean will be explained in a future video. But for now, we're just going to test that we've set up Xcode correctly. So hit the play button at the top here. Alternatively, you can press Command R if you're like me and like to do things with shortcuts. Hopefully this shouldn't take too long to compile. It can be quite slow when you run it for the first time. Be even slower if you're in the 1990s. So the project is trying to access files that are essentially in your downloads folder, and that's part of the way the project works. So again, you're going to have to trust us on this and hit OK. And hopefully, if everything goes to plan, you should end up with this thing down here that says, Hello, Sam, the project is working, I hope, or whatever message you chose to write uh, to yourself in here. So as far as we know now, the project is working successfully. On the left-hand side here, you'll find that, especially in Catalina and possibly on Mojave with different versions of Xcode, you'll find these warnings here. And this is because our project works across multiple versions of Xcode and multiple versions of OS X. Um, so when, as you move forward into sort of newer versions, you end up with these kind of depreciated warnings here. Um, you can ignore all this stuff. Um, this isn't relevant for now. If you do click on something by accident, you may update something that might break your project. So I'd recommend that you just essentially ignore the, ignore the warnings here. We will come to what errors are, which are a different thing altogether in another video. But for now, please just ignore this uh, kind of rubbish and just click back on the file view and hopefully everything will be good. So you successfully set up the Xcode project. In the next video we're going to look at the two applications that we use on this course. These are Acerve and Codebook. So see you again soon. Thank you for watching.